what's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. Today I'm taking a look at the iconic, world famous, game changing boot from Timberland, the men's six inch premium waterproof boot. So the Timberland Company was founded back in 1928, back when it was called the Abington Boot Company. And the boot that made the company so famous was released in 1973, and it was aimed at New England's working class. So it became pretty popular among farmers and construction workers. But the sales more than tripled in the 1990s, which just happens to be the time where it became an icon of rap and hip hop music. Now they say the reason this boot was so popular with that demographic is because the boot is insulated, so they're good at keeping your feet warm on chilly nights when you're standing out on the street corner dealing drugs all night. And I mean, you know, 50 Cent, Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z, all these guys who wear Timberlands a lot also used to be drug dealers. I can't really verify how true that is, but they're really popular among the hip hop community and the African American community and just the American community. Like here in Brooklyn, New York, I see people wearing these every day, all kinds of people, everyone from construction workers to trust fund hipsters and everyone in between. So, is this boot worth the hype? Let's take a close look. So these boots are called the six inch premium waterproof boots. Most people just call them like the Timberland boots. Some people call them Tim's as well. You can get them in a few different colors. I've seen them in black and brown. I've also seen them in pink and neon green. There are a lot of interesting colors out there that people have come up with over the years. This is the wheat color. It is far and away the most popular version of this boot. It's far and away Timberland's most popular boot. Arguably like the most popular boot. Definitely one of the most popular boots of all time. They're absolutely everywhere. Uh, I also want to say a lot of people get really weird about how you lace these boots like with the precise lacing crossing over in the right direction and missing certain eyelets and everything else uh, I'm here to say I don't care I don't want anyone complaining of me lacing these boots the wrong way that just boots is just laces it's fine. <laughs> anyway, these boots, they're completely waterproof. It's a really big pro of them. They weigh about two pounds, and a lot of that weight comes from the insulation. It's from a company called Prima Loft, but it's totally insulated. And more than half of the insulation comes from recycled plastic bottles, which is a pretty cool touch. They have this leather cuff at the top to help with the insulation as well. These are Taslan nylon laces, and this is a grip stick rubber lug sole. And then, of course, there's this leather we have to talk about. So this leather is called Wheat Nubuck. Uh, there are a lot of people who think this is suede. It is not, it's Nubuck. Uh, that's what a lot of people call a top grain leather. That term is actually kind of contested because some people say top grain is when the top layer of the hide is sanded away. Hallway Leather Company told me that full grain is actually a type of top grain. I'm not getting into all that here, but Nubuck is a uh, type of leather that has been sanded or buffed on the grain side. That's the outside of the leather to give it a slight nap of protein fibers. You can see you can change the color just by rubbing along like this. So it feels a bit nappy like suede, uh, but the crucial difference is that suede is made from the inside of the uh, leather, like the flesh side of the leather. Nubuck is made from the outside. So these boots are very, very waterproof. They are so waterproof, in fact, that a lot of people find that conditioners just don't work on them. Like they can't seep into the leather because it's been waterproof so much. And Nubuck honestly isn't really something people normally condition anyway. If you want to keep them clean, you want to give them a good brush down when they get dirty. But actually, this is your regular horsehair brush. You might want something a bit stiffer, like a scrubbing brush or maybe a toothbrush as well. A lot of people use those. Now, another thing that people use on this is a pencil eraser to get rid of stains. That's something you might want to think about. I gotta say, you really should think about that a lot because these boots, they get dirty very easily and it's just a total nightmare to get them clean. In my experience anyway, I bought a uh, Mr. Clean uh, scrubbing eraser for these ones and I just totally discolored the leather where I used it. It's tough to keep them clean. Having very spotless Timberland boots definitely sort of like a mark of pride among a lot of people, sort of like keeping your sneakers very white. It's difficult to do, so uh, look out for that if that's a big priority for you. If they really need a good cleaning, Timberland has a product called Renewbuck, which is a very good name for a Nubuck cleaner. You just kind of spray it onto a cloth and like rub it all over this and then let it dry. That's something that might work out for you. Now the shoe is waterproof already, so you shouldn't have to do anything to like restore or maintain the waterproofness. But if you are worried about salt stains and things like that, uh, Timberland also sells a product called Balm Proofer XL, and that is a product that's going to help to keep it more salt proof. So there are a lot of ways to take care of this leather, but again, keeping them stain free is pretty tough. So that's something you're kind of signing up for when you buy these boots. Okay, so this outsole, this is called Grip Stick. When you first get it, it is very, very sticky. You get stickiness all over you, it sticks to the ground. It's very annoying, at least that was my experience. The sole is made from 10% recycled materials though, which is pretty cool. There's also a midsole which is made of rubber and the insole is made of urethane and you can pull out the insole here, see? 
So there's no leather or cork in the sole there. That's important to point out. Normally you have a leather or cork or maybe even a porn insole that breaks in over time. This is a removable foam insert, so it doesn't really mold to your foot over time the same way like a leather or a cork sole does. It does however have a steel shank, which helps a lot with arch support and stability of the shoe. Now it is super waterproof, uh, but it is made with waterproof sealed seams. It is not a Goodyear welt. This is bond welted which pretty much just means it's cemented like a sneaker is. It's not super different to that. That's not to say it's poor quality or anything like that, but when you go through this sole, that will probably be it. Now, normally I'd say you can't resole a bun welted shoe, but this boot is so popular that there are some cobblers out there who do specialize in resoling them uh, if you want to try your luck with them, but uh, they're not that easy to resole. Now, as for the fit and the sizing, these go all the way up to size 18, and apparently Shaquille O'Neal got a pair made for him that was size 23, so maybe you can get an extra large pair made for you if you ask very nicely. Now, as far as the sizing goes, a lot of people say these are true to size. They are not. They are big shoes. I actually got an 11.5 in these first, which is like my true size, and they were really roomy. I went and returned them. I got a size 11 instead, and they're good. They're still a little bit roomy. I probably could have gone at 10.5 if I wanted to, and I've never had to say that about any pairs of boots. The 11 is still fine though. It's just that if you look at this from the size, it is a roomy boot. This is not like a slim fit. It's not a flat toe. It's, it's a roomy boot. But you know, that's the nice thing about it. A lot of people really like that about this brand. As to the actual wearing them in, uh, I did not have any issues wearing them in. They were not uncomfortable at all. They're super comfortable boots. The arch support is pretty decent. The grip is very decent. Because of that urethane install, the shock absorption is really good as well. So they're very functional boots. One thing I will mention though about this grip, it looks like it has very, very good grip, but it takes a couple of days for the bottom of the shoes to get like less sticky and more used to being out in the real world. The first day I wore these, I slipped right down the steps at the Atlantic Avenue Barclays Center subway stop in Brooklyn and I look like a complete idiot. So I would say walk around these a bit more gingerly in the first couple of days and then they're gonna be good to go. So as for the price, a pair of these shoes, generally speaking, it's gonna cost between $160 and $180. I paid $174 for mine, but they're available in so many places, the price really does vary a lot. But that's about the price you wanna look for. They're sold in so many places, it's not super hard to get them on sale if you're patient, that's something worth thinking about. Now for people who are used to wearing sneakers, and this is like their first pair of boots, which for a lot of people it is, sort of like Doc Martens, a lot of people think that's expensive. I will say it is expensive for a pair of like cemented sole sneakers. For a pair of nice boots, it's not that expensive. These are considered pretty inexpensive boots. Now, it does not have the same sort of fanciness of design of a lot of the other boots that I've looked at. Like it's bun welted, there's no leather or cork in the sole. The new buck is kind of so-so leather. So I know, I think the price is okay. If they were over $200, it would be pretty insane. But the price they are now, it's acceptable, honestly, like given the materials and the construction. All right, why should you get a pair of Tim's? Uh, they are fully waterproof and they are insulated, so they work well in a ton of different environments. Like they're very versatile in that regard. The grip is really good as well, which helps really good shock absorption too, good arch support. And they're very, very inexpensive. Again, not compared to sneakers, but compared to boots, especially boots that can like withstand a bit of damage. These are very well priced. Another thing is that while they are not dressy, they're not versatile in that regard. Like you definitely can't wear them with like a suit or a blazer or anything like that. I would call them versatile in that they fit into a bunch of different subcultures, you know, like everyone wears these boots. So like whether you're in hip hop or you're just a hipster or anywhere in between, these are boots that are just kind of accepted by everybody. So that's like an upside for this as well. No matter what your fashion, there's probably some room for Timberlands in there. There are a few potential downsides with these boots. Uh, they're not dressy. I mean, you already know that, like you can tell that by looking at them. It's not a big downside, but it's worth pointing out. A bigger problem with these boots, honestly, this leather is just super hard to keep clean and this wheat color really makes stains stand out a lot. And a lot of people really take pride in having spotless Tim's, like that's sort of the look everyone tries to go for. It's honestly kind of a Sisyphean task. Like as soon as they get clean, they get dirty again. You have to repeat that whole cycle. Honestly, I wanted to actually film this review a week ago, but I took these shoes outside to get some photos. They got a bit of mud and rain on them. All of a sudden I had to clean them, wait for them to dry, and I just ran out of time and couldn't do this review. So I'm just letting you know, it is work keeping these clean. That's probably the biggest downside of these shoes. Also the inside lining, some people say, probably one of the most common complaints I hear is that the lining, which is a mixture of leather and man-made materials, it uh, sort of frays after time isn't super, super long lasting. Uh, I haven't had that experience myself, but it's possible that's something you're gonna need to look forward to down the road that the lining can like get some, lose some of its integrity. Uh, it also stained my socks, 
Fest my water, that's something you can look forward to as well. I also gotta say, they're very hard to resole. Again, some specialists do specialize in resoling tins. Generally speaking, you're gonna have a harder time resoling these than you would with like a more expensive Goodyear welted shoe. They're also quite voluminous, which I mentioned before. That's not really a bad thing, like they're very roomy, it makes them comfortable, but it's kind of hard to wear these with like fitted pants because they still just like gonna stick out at the bottom of your cuffs. So you wanna wear like slightly baggier jeans with these, and that's what I found anyway. But look, for the price, I think these are pretty good quality boots. Like I was ready to point out a bunch of flaws, but for what you're paying and what you're getting, I think they're a pretty good buy. They're a bit more expensive than sneakers, but they last you way longer than sneakers. So honestly, uh, I understand the hype behind Timberlands. All right, so those are my thoughts on the incredibly famous six inch premium waterproof boots from Timbaland. I hope I did them justice. Uh, you can check out the full written review on my site with a bunch of pictures of me running around Brooklyn and there's a bit more written detail there. You can just Google Stridewise and Timbaland, that should pop up. And make sure you subscribe as well because I've got a ton more bit reviews and comparisons coming up.